Happy Friday! And the Scary Lad made it bit mania. The Kyle Shanahan Show! Kyle Shanahan, a genius with no damn common sense. Friday, February 16th, and the 49ers still lost the Super Bowl, but I'm going to get you through it. Are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Caballero, 49 faithful throughout the multiverse. Welcome to Gary Lamb, made of it, mania. The Kyle Shanahan Show. My name is Gary I'm a macho man. Break you off with game to make you say, oh yeah. oh yeah. Once again, oh no. The 49ers lost the Super Bowl. And the toughest thing is, the 49ers wouldn't have been there without Kyle Shanahan. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about that. But he's the guy who may be holding him back. Let's talk about that, the Kyle Shanahan show today. We got to address this. But first, I want to address uh, Steve Wilkes. And really, it tells you more about Kyle Shanahan than anything. Steve Wilkes was a Kyle Shanahan hire. But Steve Wilkes was always in between. He wasn't. A 49er guy, he didn't come up through the Shanahan system like Sala or or uh, or uh, Tamiko Ryan. He 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 wasn't one of Shanahan's guys. He 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 wasn't a guy who Kyle Shanahan could take his reputation, right? Like ah, I made that guy, and I'm gonna give Kyle Shanahan credit. He's fantastic at developing coaches. These guys go on to do big things, do bigger things than he brought them on to do. Good job, Kyle. But Steve Wilkes, my man, he doesn't have a huge reputation, but he's a veteran. And the Niners didn't treat him as such. Being around the NFL 25 years, um, been around a lot of teams. He was really hired to be a lackey. Because he was supposed to learn an offense. He didn't even, a defense. He didn't even know. I'm talking about Steve Wilkes. That wasn't going to work. He was in between and doomed from the beginning. He was a middle manager. It just started out bad for him. Nick Bosa was not in camp when Steve Wilkes was putting in the defense. He wasn't going to work. And I said this before, ironically, Steve Wilkes was fired after maybe his best three and a half quarters, or at least, you know, um, quarter and a half of football. Or a three and a half quarters of football. Whew. But he's gone. All right. It just what. And here, here's why he's gone. I'm gonna try to keep this short. He didn't keep the main guys happy. Fred Warner and Nick Bosa. They weren't happy. They weren't happy with the way C. Wilkes married the pass rush and the coverage. And this is why Steve Wilkes is gone. Either you're going to go all in with the Niner way, or you're going to say, fuck that. I'm going to do it my way. I'm the boss. And he was in between. He wanted to pass rush and not play tight coverage. And it didn't work because... You guys, you gave guys like Joe Burrow early in the season and Patrick Mahomes at the worst possible time. You gave him a pass rush, but you left things open short. So he gave him, you gave him easy reads with easy passes. 
All right, as opposed to Spagnola and the Chiefs, who played plaster coverage with McDuffie and uh, Legereus Sneed. But they made Brock's throws harder. They made Brock throw you over the top. They, they, they okay, even if they didn't get a bump, even if a third uh, uh, and, and a four Ayuk was open, okay, and the last play of the, the last four hours off of the play of the whole season, they were, they were bumping. The, the, the coverage was so tight in that split second. There's no reason to look over there because you had, you actually had Jennings open. He, he could have won a 50-50 ball. But the Chiefs put it in his mind that it was going to be hard every time. So Brock had a, it's better, um, he put it where only um, Jennings could catch it. But it was, that, was a, that was a read the whole time. But he threw it where no one could catch it because Chris Jones was in his face. And that's the bottom line. But the Chiefs, they went all in with the pass rush, and it made uh, and the the it was married in the back end where they're going to play tight coverage. You can't get it off in time. Steve Wilkes was in between the whole time. When you go all in on the pass rush, you got to go all in with the back end. You can't play soft. You can't leave easy passes for Mahomes as opposed to what the Chiefs did to us. They went all in with the pass rush. They were they had tight coverage, sticky coverage to start with. So you, you don't have an easy read. Okay, you don't have an easy read. And they were and they were flexible, able to move. But here's okay. Here's the thing. When you're in between, you ain't gonna win. It was a bad hire from the beginning. Another thing he uh, why still Steve Wilkes is gone, Isaiah Oliver. That was his guy. So the Super Bowl, I'm not gonna blame Steve Wilkes because the Niners played fantastic in the Super Bowl. They were crappy in the NFC championship game, but there were just so many little things. So many little things about Wilkes they didn't like. Bang bang nine again, Captain Tony. This is a tough one because this is the Kyle Shanahan show, Tony. This is a tough one because the reason why we're here is Kyle Shanahan. But he's only 44 and he needs to grow. But I wanted to get to Steve Wilkes because Steve Wilkes was not the guy for the job. He did a... He was dealt a position of... Uh, you know, he, he knew what he was getting into. But he didn't because Steve Wilkes has never been at the top level. So from jump, either he's got to know his role as Kyle Shanahan's lackey, do everything Kyle Shanahan tells you, which is not right to ask a veteran coach, a guy who's been around to do that. That's wrong. That's not Kyle. You can't have a, a middle manager. Either, either you have someone you're bringing up like he's done before, he's had success. Or you have transcendent players and coaches like Andy Reid has. Eric Bieniemy in offense he's had before. And Steve Spagnuolo on his defensive coordinating end. This is the problem with Kyle Shanahan. With the whole team on his side of the ball. He's good at bringing people up. No doubt about that. But can he handle a transcendent player? Can he handle a Patrick Mahomes or a Tom Brady or an Aaron Rodgers? I need to finish my point in Steve Wilkes, but this, this is the micro. You hire a guy, a tweener, a guy with experience, a guy who knows what he's doing, but he, a guy who can't do his thing, and he can't do your thing. So either when it goes, when it comes, I'm gonna give you, the reason why you lost the Super Bowl because he didn't listen to me in the first place, Kyle. I'll go into more of that later. But you can't have have another tweener. You either you need to transcend because none of the players, the coaches, nobody came through big. And that's why the Niners are a B plus. That's why they're NFC championship level great. And I appreciate that. You can grow. But you can't grow unless you add something to your game. You need those transcending people. People that company that's gonna help you grow.
outside of the family. See, Wolf was not the guy. He had to go, but it's not his fault. This, this was kind of, he, he did his best job. He did everything he needed to do. I feel bad because he's a guy uh, who deserves more respect. If they would, the Niners should have hired him to let him do his own thing. They didn't want, they didn't want that. He took the job, but really, do you really have a choice? When you got some big money, you got to take care of a family. You need a job. You take the job. It didn't work out. I'm going to transition right now. The reason why the 49ers don't win the big game is because they do not practice for the big moment. Steve Wilkes wasn't ready for the big moment because you didn't hire a guy who, who could be better than you. Notice all the transcendent players on the 49ers, 49ers are on offense. Is there truly a guy that says, who you could take and say, I totally believe in this guy? Because Kyle has him too under control. He didn't believe in Steve Wilkes from the beginning. The players like Bosa and Fred Warner knew it. He was a middle manager. And he was doomed. And you know what? He, you know, playing guys like Isaiah Oliver from the beginning and veterans um, like Logan Ryan. I can't stand every time I see Logan Ryan in the Super Bowl. Every time I see him. What's up? What's up, O'Malley? But why? I'd rather go. As much as I clown Ambry Thomas, I'd rather go because he's a forty. Kyle does a great job. All the 49er guys, there's, there's no Chase Young loafing. You know, the, 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 the guys that Kyle Shanahan brings up, they don't loaf except for Debo. I'm going to get to more of that. But the problem with the 49ers, they need someone to transcend. Kyle gets them this far, but they need a Patrick Mahomes or someone in that building, a coach, someone to say, oh, Dre Greenlaw is out. Let's attack. And as ugly as it looked, and I feel it's messed up, Travis Kelsey, he bumped into his boss. You don't do that. You don't do that, Travis. I don't like that. But the Niners don't have that guy yet. This is the Kyle Shanahan show just to reset. But I had to, you know, I had to go why, why C. Wilkes is gone. It wasn't the Super Bowl. Because you know what? If you're tied with Patrick Mahomes in overtime, you already lost. Anybody. Name one guy. You're going to lose. As good as the defense played, but it's the same mistakes that haunted them the whole year. Okay? That, but I had to address Steve Wilkes. He's a microcosm of not getting the number one guys, and giving them license to do what they got to do. Because Kyle micromanages, and it's something he's going to have to mature from. And I'm going to go to maturity. Jed York and Kyle Shanahan are immature. Jed York had a damn Super Bowl, pre-Super Bowl, just like love fest. He brought every damn empl 800 employees to the Super Bowl. Don't got time to mess around. You're there to win the game. What's this quest for six? I'm tired of the quest for six. Jed York and Kyle Shanahan are like college frat boy hot shots. And yeah, I I like what Jed's doing better than what you know his his parents were doing. Uh, hell yeah, I like that he made sure the 49ers are not in L.A. They're in Santa Clara, but it, it, it's like, okay, it's not, that's a microcosm. It's cool, but it's not what we, what we really need. It's, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not San Francisco. It, it's not the shine. We are NFC level. We are, we are B-list celebrities, right? Right now, we have a lot of drama because we're not prepared. We, we don't prepare to be the world champion. Kyle Shanahan's immature. One thing you can gain is maturity, but you're not going to get it unless you're around people who can help you grow. Steve Wilkes was not that guy. I feel bad because you don't treat uh, someone who's been around, um, you know, your elder like that. I think the night, you know, within the circumstances, you lost the Super Bowl, you're upset, you want to win, you put so much into it. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a perfect situation, but it was like, you 
you're in a relationship, you wanted to break up from the beginning, you're tired of it, and then the last straw, even if you're the one doing wrong, at the end, just like, you know what? We can't do this. We can't have Logan Ryan on, uh, you know, on Harmon, or, you know, at the end of the game. I don't want to see... I don't want to see that dude no more. All right? And just watch this. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to break your heart. When you watch the final play of the Super Bowl, you're going to see 33 out there, which no one should have number 33! You want to know why Roger Craig is in the Hall of Fame? Because the 49ers have never retired his jersey. That's why. They're stuck in patterns. This whole organization. We can't retire a jersey. Not, not, forget that. No one should ever wear 33. Especially a guy you got off of a cruise in the middle of the season. Like I said, I'd rather go down with Ambry Thomas than a dude who's not all sold in. Or even Isaiah Oliver. I go with them. So there it is. Steve Wilkes. Alright, let's get to it. I'm going to stay in the positives. Usually, Kyle Shanahan's teams, they play hard. The team is well organized. They're not in trouble. He has a good system on offense and defense. There's continuity. There is bone to the operation. There is a low floor. If you've got a decent quarterback and decent talent, Kyle Shanahan will get you real far. But what the whole team is missing is transcendence. What's going to take you to the next level? Who's going to be like the Patrick Mahomes is going to say, Hey, coaches, Greg Greenlaw's hurt. You know? And that all comes down to not preparing for the big moment. It's ridiculous that the 49ers don't practice two-minute drill enough. The San Francisco 49ers, they are known for the two-minute magic. They are not ready. The 49ers should be absolutely one of the best teams in no huddle offense. They are not. They never go to no huddle. They never tire out the defense. It's not there. And in the end, that's why they're not smooth at the end of games. They're not smooth at the end of games because they are not prepared. Not knowing the rules. Kyle Yushek, not knowing the rules of overtime. Not prepared. You know, my first thought, okay, you know what? Defense is tired. Uh, I'd rather score first. But you know what? The, the Chiefs say they were going to go for two if the Niners scored a touchdown. That would have been the game right there. And you know what? I think they would have scored because Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Not prepared. They're just not prepared. I want to go into the, the, the first three drives of the second half. Eight passes. One run. And I know there was penalties, but there was plays on the Chiefs side of the football Where there was long distance, they shortened it up. Short pass play, got him within striking range. And they made it more manageable. The 49ers didn't have that because they're not prepared. Debo Samuel getting locked down by McDuffie. 49ers not prepared. They're not prepared. They're they weren't. They had a hell of a first half game plan. Not prepared. Christian McCaffrey only had 16 carries before the Super Bowl. Kyle Shanahan said. He wanted to rush 30 times. 
He got 30, but that was an OT. It wasn't close to that. J.P. Mason was healthy all season. Elijah Mitchell was healthy. They're not prepared. You couldn't play. You couldn't play J.P. Mason because he didn't do anything in the playoffs. You got to get these guys touches. You got to get them touches throughout the year. They weren't playable because they were not prepared. They're not prepared for the big moment. They're not prepared for that big drive. But they they got you know Brock bottom back twice. The Niners were down thirteen to ten. Brock bottom back. He took the lead on Patrick Mahomes in overtime. But it wasn't enough. He's too committed to the system. You should be committed to the system. But you've got to prepare. You've got to prepare for the big moments. And he's not. He's a genius with no common sense. He's always got his face in the playbook in big moments. He needs to hire a damn offensive coordinator. It's just too much. I said it last year when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I'm like, you know what? If, Kyle, if Randy Reed can hire an offensive coordinator, he should. Hire, hire the next Steve Wilkes. Hire a lackey. Hire a guy you can call timeout on when you don't like to play on your side of the ball. But you need a guy who can... I don't care who it is. A guy who could take a load off you in that offense because you're not you're missing these big time things. You're missing you're you're missing a flexibility on this team in the big moment cuz you can't you can't be prepared for everything. But you need you need a little freedom. You you need less responsibility. So you can oversee this whole team. Otherwise, you're not a head coach. It's a question, Kyle. It's a question. You need to hire an offensive coordinator. You need... And like I said, that position could be a total lackey. But you need some relief from the pressure of overseeing that offense. All right. Not prepared for the big moment. And I'm going to say, it started in the off season Because you got to teach, they're good, but there's things you should have seen. In the wide nine, you need like a D Ford, a pass rush that's going to get there quick, but you chose not to do that. The draft sucked. Your dra- your whole, the whole off season sucked. I'm going to tell you, the offseason sucks. They didn't... Okay, the draft... Let's go right here. You obviously had a need, an offensive right tackle. Okay, you didn't get that. It would be hard in the third round. Which what you could have done, a, a quick pass rusher, you try to adjust that with Robert Beal Jr., I like the thought, it didn't happen, okay. You got two tight ends, it made sense to get two tight ends because you don't want George Kittle having to be a lineman, which he's great at, but you need a pass catcher, and I'm going to go, We are, do not trade George Kittle, because tight ends are where the league is at right now, um, I'm going to get this in a little bit later. When Brock wasn't so overmanaged, he had good chemistry with Kittle last year. They were able to have a little chemistry, but Kyle destroys that. But our, uh, we didn't get nothing except for Jair Brown, which is a great pick, but we, guess what? We had two other. Other first round, uh, third round picks. We got Cam Latu. 
We could have got a blocking tight end. Good. We didn't get that. We got Braden Willis. Didn't, you, didn't use him all damn year. Then when we do, he's not prepared because you don't play him enough. George Kittle goes out for a couple plays. He has a big penalty, which messes us up at the worst possible time at the last drive. Because we're not prepared. We're not, we didn't prepare none of the young guys. You put your reputation on the line, 49ers, when you got Cam Latu. Didn't play him. Then you got another tight end, which I thought, you know, you might as well just go with the young guys. Because Warner ain't going to never pass, catch a pass. Our backup tight end. And you got Dwelly. You never give him the ball anyway. So at least get some blocking tight ends. At least play him. At least get him playable in the Super Bowl. You did not address that. You did not get your young talent playable enough for the Super Bowl. Warner, your backup tight end, was never a threat to catch a ball. And now you relegated your one of your biggest playmakers, one of the best tight ends in football, is relegated to blocking. And really, because of your scheme, there's there's no there's no it, there's no ability, no creativity to to attack matchups. I'll get to that a little bit. I think we have to question the off season of getting Javon Hargrave. We needed a run stop and defensive tackle. We already got Armstead. You know he could do it all, but we needed a run stop and defensive tackle, and we needed. A, uh, a speed pass rusher. We went the opposite. And maybe that's not the wide nine, but you, 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 you need... The reason why the 49ers, the, the wide nine worked for us, because we knew how to stop the run, and we got a guy, uh, we, we hired a guy who really didn't know that extra nuance. And Steve Wilkes didn't know how to get it done. Um, and what the 49ers had in Salah, in Salah and... Um, and D'Amico Ryan's guys who knew how to get that done because they obviously had great linebackers and you know Fred Warner, Greenlaw, and Aziz Ashir. Those that's that's why you stop the run. Is what it is. All right. And you had Tart back there, like a run stopping uh, safety, and uh, D and uh, Jimmy Ward. So it's like you had better personnel, but still. The 49ers didn't understand what the hell they do that was special. They, they, they didn't respect their talent. And I think some of the guys I mentioned needed to go because of their, you know, Jimmy Ward's were hurt a lot. I like Jimmy Ward. Um, Aziz, you can only pay so many guys. But you know what? You paid the price because when Dre Greelon went down, you didn't have an answer. But we didn't develop, we didn't develop um, our DBs. We went with Isaiah Oliver. Um, Sam Womack not developed. Right? Not playable. Not playable. Um, D. Ford. D. Ford not, I mean, uh, D. Winters. Not playable in the Super Bowl because we had, we had so many blowout games. Could not get him in at all. Not developed. Jalen Graham, another linebacker, not developed. We had two. We had two linebackers and two tight ends from this draft. Get one of them ready. They're not playable. Then you, you, you have Oren Book, Brooks. Um, you have guys like Logan Ryan in the game. I don't want to see him. I don't even know what the hell happened to Isaiah Oliver. I would have kept uh, Deshaun Jameson out there. We had enough blowouts early to develop some young talent. We should have done that. We didn't. And none of these guys, none of our draft was playable in the big moment, except for Jair Brown. who We were only playing Jair Brown because we had an injury, and yet we took him out against the Packers. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't develop our talent. Our bench wasn't ready. But we had plenty of opportunity to play. We were not prepared for the big moment because we messed up in the season and in the off season. If we were just going to bet, we might as well draft it off as a tackle, or we might as well draft it a, uh, you know, a big a big time player 
to be a, a defensive end a pass rush specialist. 49ers have work to do. And it worked in the regular season. But against guys, top-notch guys, I think we couldn't transcend. No one transcended. Kyle does not allow his players any kind of creativity. Get to my next point. He makes stuff too complicated. He's too fancy. And if you're going to be fancy, you need plays. They're going to get someone what? Debo is getting getting plastered. And now you to a, a same degree. A little bit less. I'll go into that a little bit more. But if you're going to be that sticky, if you're going to be that um, stuck to your, to your own, own uh, your own agenda, you better come through and make a play for that Debo's wide open. Ayuk's wide open. Kittle's wide open. That didn't happen. It didn't happen because Spagnola simplified it. The defensive coordinator of the Chiefs, he said, you know what? Brock's beating our zone. He's dropping these dimes. And I'll get to Brock in a minute. Drop his, uh, Brock is beating our zone. He knows where to go. We're going to play man-to-man. Keep it simple, stupid. Kyle gets too damn fancy. And it didn't work because, you know what? Hey, you know what? My man could beat Debo. Trent McDuffie can beat Debo. Debo can't get open. They can't, you know what? This man could beat that man. And in the moment, because the, the game plan was phenomenal. Um, like I said, they didn't make any big plays out of it. There was no one super open. But overall, I like the first half, uh, aside from not scoring. And yeah, you can blame the refs. That's all true. Because it wasn't that they didn't get the same whistle. Fine. But we were only up 10-3. And that was really tough. But anyway. None of the fancy stuff worked for a big play except for that. What There's one play that Jawan Jennings passed. But we might have scored anyway. That was hella risky. We needed about four or five plays for Kyle Shanahan uh, that Kyle Shanahan could have made that were wide open for Brock and made his job easier. He's only 24. And I, and I watched the J.T. O'Sullivan breakdown. It's like, yeah, there were plays where Brock Purdy didn't have the great footwork. That's why he threw some of these ducks. But you've got to remember, when you're under duress, it's it just, it's simple. If I could see this, like, I don't know shit compared to Kyle Shanahan, but I could say, oh, this guy's better than that guy, right? So what the, what the Chiefs did, when they brought their pressure, our guys were covered. So you get, you know, it doesn't matter who you... When Patrick Mahomes was under duress when Drake Greenland was still out there, he was making mistakes too. He threw a pick! The fucking pick took the first half! The Chiefs could have could have rocked our... Okay. The Chiefs could have put us away. They could have tied us at the beginning of the second half. And I was thinking, man, the, the Niners are looking dominant. But that first half time possession is going to be done because we got it. It's not going to be an advantage because we, we, we dominated the ball. There's a long halftime. They're going to be just fine, the Chiefs. And they get the ball back. And I thought, man, this first, this first opening drive is going to be huge for the 49ers because we can put them away and Brock's got a match. Patrick Mahomes throws an interception. We had him. The defense stepped up. But Kyle couldn't get a play. And then he kind of he folded in the clutch. Instead of, instead of you know, I know there was, there was a long down and distance to start off these drives. Instead of shortening it up and believing in himself and believing in Christian McCaffrey. He, he wasn't ready for the critical moment. He wasn't ready for when things go bad. And the opposite was true of the Chiefs. They, they had their own share of uh, long down and distance. They had a guy run down backwards in a critical moment, running backwards. It went from a you know a a, a short down and distance to a long down as a guy ran backwards. But they were ready. They got it back little by little because they believed. And that's the problem with Kyle. 
He can't believe in his players. He can't believe in his coaches. He didn't believe in Wilkes. He didn't believe in Wilkes enough to let his system go. He doesn't believe in an offense coordinator to let his system go. And that's why I said from the beginning, if the 49ers lose the Super Bowl, it'll be because of Kyle Shanahan. And no one's surprised. It's the same old shit. And if they won, it was gonna be beha- it was gonna have to be because of Brock Purdy. And Brock Purdy played fine. But he wasn't able to transcend. And I want to get to this point. Matchups. Brock Purdy, you're fine. I'll get to Brock in a minute. But I want to say that one of the I'll get to consequences. One of the pro- the problem is now, instead of Brock Purdy being a made man, he's got questions again. Because I think Brock can get better. I was talking about his footwork. He can get better. Brock is going to be like, he's going to be in the style of Drew Brees. He, he has that asset of being quick in the pocket. He moves all around. But you know what? The, the Chiefs respected his movement and went and put a spy on his ass. And the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan didn't listen to me and play matchup football. They did not put a spy on Patrick Mahomes. And that's why they didn't win the damn Super Bowl and gave up big runs when it really mattered. And I know Drake Greenlaw was out, but Warren Burst can spy. They didn't do it. They did. You didn't listen to me, Mike. I told you what to do. Put a spy on him. Yeah, Drake Greenlaw and Fred Warner are, are good enough to do every damn thing. But you, you make shit too complicated. On both sides of the ball, you want to do everything your way. You've got to put some trust out there somewhere. And that's why I'm saying, you know what? Maybe we should hire Belichick. As a defensive coordinator. Maybe Vabral. Vabral. Or just get a guy from your own system. But whoever it is, you got to trust with the keys of the car. So it can't be a tweener. It's either got to be someone who you respect to run their damn defense. A top guy. Okay? A someone who you respect. Someone who's going to fight with your ass. Someone who the players are going to respect. Because they're not going to respect anybody. Or a guy that's like, okay... Or a guy from your system. Just think about it as a... Let's think. Kyle, understand the player's perspective before I go into matchups. Okay. If you're a working man, you're part, of the, you're part of labor, right? You see how it is when they hire managers. You want someone... If they're coming from the outside, they are good. They are bringing you up a level and you could respect them and you want to... Because it works, you know, you don't have to like them, but you got to respect them. And, you know, so something that's going to help you get better, make your job easier, right? You could trust that they know what the hell they're doing better than you, or they will. Or they'll, you know, it's got to be up in that level, someone with a good reputation, right? They like, this guy's good, okay, I, I, can, I can learn from this guy, right? Or you want someone, hey, you know what, so-and-so, uh, you know, Work their way up in our system. Yeah, we're happy this guy is going to come up because he knows what it's like to beat us. He knows our perspective. And it's going to be cool, right? And, 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 and then Kyle can look down on that guy, and it's someone coming up, right? But you can't hire the next Steve Wilkes. A guy in the middle. A guy who has a reputation from outside, but you, do they, are they really smart? If you can't trust them, no. It's different on the offensive side. Because Kyle, that's his baby. Everyone knows it's his baby. You can hire a lackey as an offense coordinator, which you should. So the 49ers have to have trust in their matchups. They have to have the human being side of the game. That's where Kyle Shanahan misses out. The human being side of the game. Where the Chiefs can say, you know what? My man can beat Debo. Trent McDuffie can beat Debo. It's done. Kyle Shanahan couldn't get him open within the system. And this is the problem with the no matchup football. And this has been a problem the whole time. There should have been a spy on Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Green, Greenlaw, Greenlaw, and uh, and uh, Warner. They could do. They, they're just every damn where. They're so good. But you can't rely on the whole damn. And that's another reason why Wilkes is out. They didn't. Re, he didn't realize the toll it's taken on Greenlaw and Warner. He didn't protect them. With their fronts and in the back end. He didn't protect the linebackers at all. That's probably why they didn't like him. That's why they're all beat up. That's why that's why they just didn't play the same way. Okay. 
I'll get back to that. There should have been a spy on Patrick Mahomes. And he, Kyle Shanahan kills chemistry with his system. And the system is good because you need that framework. You need the framework. But you need a place for player creativity and coach creativity. And this is a great time because you got your ass kicked by a team with the system and player and coach creativity and, and a little space for them to grow. You look at the Chiefs side. They were getting their asses whooped. Kelsey couldn't do a damn thing. But as soon as Dre Greenlaw went down, yeah, and I told you that this was the matchup I was watching. Watch out for Dre Greenlaw and Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, damn, I told you. Listen to me, 49ers. You should have listened. Patrick Mahomes was watching Dre, great Dre Greenlaw the whole time because he knew that guy is a menace. So 57 went down. And lo and behold, the matchup became easier with Kelsey. Kelsey's having a big game. And after Greenlaw's out, they figure out a way to run with Mahomes. You think, you think they're going to run that play with Trey Greenlaw out there? That menace to society? No. Because they play matchup football. They were, ch they were challenging... Uh, you know, Traverius Ward. But the 49ers are challenging Trent McDuffie with Debo, and he couldn't get open. 11 damn targets. But Brandon Ayuk gets six. Brandon Ayuk didn't get more than three catches in any game in the whole playoffs. And the sad thing is this. The whole year, not more, only one 10 target game. And that's the guy Brock Purdy has most chemistry with. That's the problem. And I said it before, you know what? I'll take I'll take some 50-50 balls with Ayuk on Sneed or McDuffie. And the Chiefs played it well. They put McDuffie on uh, size-wise. They have a perfect combo. Like a bigger guy and a smaller guy. Perfect for the 49ers. They were ready. And we have that nice kind of combo, too, with our guys. Not, not on that level with, uh, you know, Lenore and uh, Tavares Ward. But if you're going to give a guy 11 targets, at, you know, at least 8 to Ayuk. And that's why. And there's been a, quite a few plays where Brock and Ayuk were not on the same page throughout the season. And they have the best catch. Brock. Ayuk has the best chemistry with Ayuk, but the problem is they don't have enough reps. 1,300 yards for Brandon Ayuk. And he just had one 10 target game. That's ridiculous. There's no match of football because Kyle relies on the offense. Brandon Ayuk may be gone. I, I don't think he should be gone. Brandon Ayuk should not be gone. I'm sounding the alarm. No. It takes forever to learn Kyle's offense. Brock's doing a great job. And as a receiver, Ayuk's doing a great job. But they're still missing that chemistry. They're still off a little bit. And they're two guys working really hard. That shows you they don't have enough reps because their coach does not take advantage of match of football. And you have to have a framework. You have to have everything. I'm not saying we are not here. You know, but in the critical damn moment. You got to be ready. You can't go off like Spencer Burford, who I, I love. That young, I, he's just not big and strong enough. But he, you know, he, he. And there's another matchup. The whole damn week. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the, you know, I, 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 I've talked about Ayuk enough, but Ayuk should be getting just fifty-fifty balls a couple of games. He should have got a couple in the Super Bowl. Brock's good enough. And if they had more chemistry, I guarantee you the plays they missed, they probably would have made one of them. Right, two big misses, Ayuk. But if you're giving them the reps together in games that they should have had to develop that one-on-one -on -one beat matchup football, they would have won. And George Kittle the same. The four, Kittle and and um, Brock Purdy had better chemistry when Brock was just coming off the bench and didn't really know that, or were coming in as a rookie not knowing it because Kyle destroys 
all the creativity. You gotta, you gotta have a baseline. You gotta know the offense, but there's gotta be like so, something inside you that says, you know what? This guy's open. I'm giving him that chance. And Brock is good. I, I denounce anyone saying Brock can't get it deep. The guys just aren't fast. You just gotta develop the chemistry where you know where your guy's catch radius is, and Brock can throw that that uh that you know um that back shoulder throw. He can throw it fine. There should have been more of that throughout the whole season, and it caught a, caught up to us because Ayuk and uh, and Brock have the best chemistry as far as the 49ers, but they haven't practiced it against the best corners. So when you get to Ladarius Sneed in the playoffs, and you, you, you know you you want you want to look to Ayuk because it's not automatic because they're not getting enough reps because they have missed. They're not getting the reps with the one-on-one -on -one matchups and the damn. I don't understand why it's with 39 to 31 passes to runs in the Super Bowl. And you're not getting it to Ayuk or Kittle. Beating the matchups. And, that, and that's why when the guy's wide open, because you're used to seeing your guy all sticky, you don't build that trust when you don't match up football. You don't know where the guy wants it. So when the, when the critical moment comes, you're not ready for it. That's, why, that's exactly what happened. Matchup football, he doesn't do it. And the biggest matchup that breaks my heart, everyone on the damn team should know 95 is a game wrecker. You should never leave him alone at any damn cost. There needed to be a special game plan to stop Chris Jones because he whoops our ass every time there wasn't. Because we don't play matchup football at the right time. And it's beat us more than once. How the hell are you going to have a Chris Of all fucking people, the biggest player of the year. How the fuck are you going to have Chris Jones wide open? More, more than not knowing the rules in overtime. No, that fucking 95 should never have less than fucking the whole team on his ass. That's not matchup football. Fucking don't let 95 beat us in the biggest fucking play in the Super Bowl. Fuck no! I don't give a fuck if you're the janitor. Did you see how the Chiefs were? They knew the rules. You see how Patrick Mahomes was? I saw 90, 57 down. They were ready for us. They were ready for us. Bagnola knew that Debo could not could not escape man-on-man uh, -man coverage. And then uh, Ayuk got Sneed in the bracket. They were ready for us. And we had a hell of a game plan in the first half, but when it shit broke down, it was like, you got to respect you human beings. Kyle Shanahan doesn't understand human talent sometimes. Ayuk needs the ball more. I said it before when Brock was throwing those picks. Hey, Brock, you can throw a 50-50 ball, but throw it to Ayuk, man. And now we don't know. We don't know if Ayuk is, because of the lack of reps, we don't know. Which is part, ten, only one game with 10 targets for, for Brandon Ayuk, when there's a few games where Debo Samuel is out, really? Is that who we are? And then you're, you say you're a running team, but then in the Super Bowl with 38 to 31, and that, that doesn't tell the story because at the fourth quarter, there was six carries for, um, six carries for uh, CMC. And I don't think we're using CMC right. CMC could be a nightmare out of the backfield running more receiver-type routes. But they fucking don't. They should be special CMC plays, special wide receiver CMC plays because he could beat so many linebackers. Same with Kittle. Like I already talked about Ayuk. And the shit they ran for Debo, it's played the fuck out. I'm going to get to Debo right now. This is part of matchup football. Debo, you can't get the fuck open and you don't block. I'm not saying trade Debo, but if someone's got to get traded, it's him. He makes too much money. And I'm not saying even get a high draft pick. I'm saying wait, wait till the, whatever it's June, whatever it is, but you don't have to pay the big money and take the big cap hit. Trade him for the cap hit. 
And if you can, get Juwan Jennings at the reasonable restricted free, free agent price. Because you cannot go, you cannot lose. You cannot lose Ayuk because he has the best chemistry with, um, with Brock Purdy. Because this, this, Brock right now is so close. It's like, like I said before, because, because we didn't win the Super Bowl, Brock can't be that guy. Brock needs it. Brock's the one knowing what he's doing. You can see he's so respectful. He can't. He's not gonna go bumping the Kyle Shanahan yet. We needed Brock Purdy to transcend. And like everyone on this fucking team, they just played okay. Fred Warner was fantastic. So was Bosa. But something went wrong. The game plan was wrong. That's why Steve Wilkes is gone. I don't, I don't know if Brandon Ayuk is, is a number, is a true number one, but I like the way he blocks. I like what he stands for. I like the way he plays. If you're going to pay anyone, pay him. If you got to get rid of someone, you got to get rid of Debo. And I'm not even saying get a high a second. As long as they take the cap hit away from us, we got we to gotta keep Ayuk. And you don't get rid of Kittle because it's a tight end game. And we can, we we literally drafted two freaking tight ends that they can't even get on the field. And when they do, a big penalty at the end. They they should have they should have developed Cam Latu or or Braden uh, or uh, Braden Willis. Didn't do it. Plenty of games we were kicking ass. Didn't do it. All the young guys should have experience, but not of them, none of them were playable. No, D. Winters and Jalen Grant weren't playable because they didn't play. Jordan Mason should have had uh, some carries in this game, but you didn't play in the playoffs. Therefore, nope. Especially when you said you were going to run 30 times. They only ran 16 in regulation, whatever. Uh, 16, I think it was six, 15 or 16 rushes for uh, McCaffrey in regulation. That's not enough. When the game was close the whole time. Big moments. Failing. Not taking care of matchups, you know. I got. I got. Hey, I didn't expect to see Trent Williams on his back and making penalties. But you know what? You got to be prepared. You you got to see what's going on on the field and see where you're winning. And the 49ers weren't able to see that. Um, I give Brock credit. He was down 13-10 in the second half and kept him in the game. Um, he got us got us the lead in overtime. But it wasn't good enough because no one, all the guys that delivered, all the guys that usually delivered. And I, I don't. I want to be careful because these guys go out there hurt. I know Debo was hurt going in that game. I know that um, what do you call it? Um, our tight end. Uh, I can't remember your name. I know. I knew. I knew eighty five. I know eighty five was hurt. How bad was he hurt? He was going to play. He's not going to complain. Don't get rid of eighty five. Don't get rid of 85, because tight ends are the name of the game. I think, he, I think he can get open a little bit easier. I think he has some of that basketball, just get open a little bit, a little bit of that, um, you know, that creativity. But Kyle takes away his offense. Kyle needs to give some, not all the time. Kyle needs to have some simpler plays within that system, where if it's a matchup where Kittle's going to win, where you get him the football, and you need you needed some of these young guys, some of these blocking tight ends to take some of that that pressure off of him. And I think tight ends, people want to get rid of Kittle. I know he's at thirty, but tight ends age better, especially if you take away some of that blocking responsibility. It should be easier to find some blocking tight ends. You got Warner, that's good, but I mean, you should be able to find a blocking tight end who has hands enough to you know to find a to find a. Some kind of savvy to find a spot here. Just not ready. And again, matchup football. The 49ers had a matchup with Kyle Yushek. When you got a two-back set, they had the matchup. They ran the ball well on that set. Kyle Yushek made some big plays, but he's not on the field enough. We had that matchup. We didn't win that matchup. We're in shotgun all the time. That's fine. But that's not our strength. That's not our... Because we're lining up to get short passes. Because when you're in that shot, you're, you're lining up for short passes. 
But that wasn't our advantage there because we had clamps on our receivers by uh, Sneed and McDuffie. They were, they were trying to stop that. We, we needed some passes out to Ayuk. I, Ayuk is our matchup winner against tight coverage. We needed some pass to Kittle. Kittle is our, is our matchup winner. We didn't do it, and we didn't run uh, enough two back sets. And, th and that's where Kyle, like, common sense, he's a genius. He's so busy looking for the new thing. He doesn't see the, he doesn't see the damn forest. He can't see the simple. No common sense. And on top of that, none of this shit worked because not one easy play for Brock Purdy. One easy play. We are one play away so many times. There's nothing egregious, but there's so many little things where we would have won the game. And we just didn't get it done. Players couldn't transcend. Players couldn't make a play. But Kyle Shanahan is our greatest strength because we have, we have this system. We have everything he does for us. But he doesn't give license for guys to make the big play. And I was, I, obviously I was hoping we win the Super Bowl. I was hoping, because I think Brock's a guy we can trust. I was hoping Brock could just, the Niners just get him through that Super Bowl. Because there, there was some footwork errors. There was some dirt bombs. You know, but you can't turn the ball over in the Super Bowl. You know, there was no hero ball, but there's not a transcendent player. And I don't think Debo is transcendent. You know why? Because if you're a receiver, you've got to get open and catch the ball. All right? When he gets the ball, great. You got to get open and catch the ball. He's not a guy you can give a 50 50 ball to against top coverage. And I don't even know about Ayuk because we didn't give him the ball. But now, when you got a rookie receiver, when you got, you got a young quarterback, a third year quarterback that's learning a complicated system, you can't rely on a rookie receiver to get here and know the damn offense because it's complicated. You got to block. So now we're looking at, I think we're going to have to trade Debo. Because I don't think he can win matchups anymore. All the tricky shit we got for Debo, none of it works no more. All the guy, the guy who Kyle actually calls plays for ain't getting open with those plays. It's either Kyle or him, and plus he doesn't block. And you, can't, you just can't have that. And that's on Kyle because, again, plays favorites. Ain't going to work. You got to be more mature. More mature. Double standards. Debo don't block. And I want to be careful. Bro, you went in there with an injury. I love you, Debo. I love that mentality you bring to the team. But whether we sign him or not, we need to sign Ayuk, and we need to start giving Ayuk the ball more. We need those reps against good players, take some losses in the regular season as far as one-on-one -on -one shots, 50-50 balls to Ayuk, because that's the future. And Kittle, same. He's got some years left. But we got, it. we got to let him be a little bit more free as far as getting out in pass coverage. And the thing that sucked, we tried to do it. When the draft, it didn't work because we don't even play the guys we put out there. You got the wrong personnel. We need, a trans we need to fucking come out of this draft and this offseason with a transcendent player on offense. If we can't sign Ayuk, we need to find whether it be in we need a weapon on offensive line. We need a, a, a de we need another weapon that's actually going to work. We need someone that you, you know. We need a Mister Reliable somewhere on this offense. If it's not Brock Purdy, if it's not IU, because right now, I think Brock's elite but ain't ain't elite enough to be Patrick Mahomes, and that's the bottom line. You grade on the curve, and you can get an A, but Patrick Mahomes is going to be an A plus because he's ready. He knows what to do. He has everything. You know, him and Ed, he has freedom to do what he needs to do. They're flexible. The Niners aren't. And I just want to get, I want to reject this, this belief that Brock can't go over the top. We don't got the speed to go over the top. Danny Gray was a bust. We, we don't have an over-the-top receiver. So that's why the Chiefs can play us tight. Because they're not afraid to get beat over the top because we don't got that kind of speed. That's the real problem. That's the real, real problem. And the Chiefs do. Even though they can't catch, they got, uh, they got McCole Hartman. What he could do is go over the top. So you got to play him soft. And that's what the 49ers miss. It's personnel. And who's responsible for that? That's, that's, that's uh, damn Shanahan.
and Lynch. Thank God we have Lynch because he's mature. But there's some basic things. You don't have to have start. What the Chiefs do is have common sense. Rasheed Rice is their, their all-around receiver. But they get guys who will go deep to make you have to play soft on coverage to make you scared. Ain't no one making you scared over the top. And even with that, Brock Purdy still is tremendous you know, uh, yards per play. They got no one to take the cap off the offense. No speed out there. And what you could do is use McCaffrey because you know he can beat any guy, any linebacker, or use Kittle because he does have speed comparative to, to safety as a linebacker, but you don't do that because you don't play matchup football. You want to play every damn play. has to be perfectly in your offense. You should have that as a base, but you don't play matchup football. And that's why you're not a Super Bowl champion. You're not ready. Because sometimes it comes down, when they know what you're doing, that everyone's done their homework, sometimes it's the best man, and you got to put your best people in position to beat their guy, and we did not do that in the Super Bowl. No one was able to transcend. No one just took over, but no one was in position to take over. Because when they took away Debo, you didn't have a fucking backup plan. Man, Debo got locked down, and we did not have a counter. So, here's the consequences. Consequence number one. Someone's head had to roll for that game. You weren't prepared. Steve Wilkes, had, his head had to roll. Someone's job was... Uh, someone got cost their job. You know, Steve Wilkes, he comes off as a smart guy. The defense may have been better with another year of experience for Steve Wilkes. But now he's gone, and you got to start over again. Now you got a question mark. A defensive coordinator. I, as bad as it was, there was a lot of good things. Steve, Steve Wilkes had some of the same problems that Kyle Shanahan had. Like, you know, not specifically, but, it, you know. Not coming through at the right time, you know? Not calling the right place at the right time. Neither of these guys called the right play at the right time. None of them. So they're the same. But now you got a guy who was willing to do anything he could for the team. Now that guy's gone. That's a consequence. Now we got to find another guy. We can get Belichick. That sounds crazy. That, that's what we need. And anyone who doesn't want to bring a guy like Belichick in, remember this. I just want to give you an example. Um, think about the, the, uh, the L.A. Lakers, the, the Phil Jackson, Shaq, Kobe, L.A. Lakers. When Jerry West put together that team, do you think he gave a damn that Phil Jackson already had six titles with the Bulls? No, because they're, they're savage. When the Golden State Warriors brought in Kevin Durant, do you think they cared about you know, what anyone thought? Kevin did. But no, Joe Lacob's a savage. You heard this news about the Golden State Warriors. They were trying to bring in LeBron James. I told you this. You didn't, you didn't want to listen, right? Because you know what? They're savage. You can't worry about what people think. You just got to be number one. And I, think, I think the Niners are good guys. But they're immature. And I'm not, remember, Kyle Shanahan, before we fire Kyle Shanahan, he's 44, younger than me. He can learn these things. But what the sad part is, we might have to win a Super Bowl without Debo Samuels. I don't want to see that. I love Debo. One of these guys have to go. We already got rid of Jimmy Ward, DeForest Buckner. But what do you think about Jimmy or not? We didn't win one with him because we were not prepared we don't prepare for winning. We don't have a two-minute drill. Kyle Shanahan had to call a timeout because he wasn't happy with the, uh, the coverage and the, and the blitz that Steve Wilkes did in the Super Bowl. We should have had this, you know, in the regular season, we should have had this talk, in, uh, you know, against the Vikings. And you know what? The play, 
The play Steve looks called work because they got a pick. Javarius Ward had the ball stripped out of his hands. The play worked. There's no trust. Kyle, Kyle has trust issues. He micromanages. He's a control freak. And that's good when all your shit's working. But when it's not working... You lose Super Bowls. Kyle Shannon is a great coach. He teaches other coaches to be great coaches. Or to, to at least get a job. Consequence one, Steve Wilkes gone. Now you got to start over again. And there's no guarantee that the next guy is going to be as qualified as Steve Wilkes? Who's it going to be? Who the hell is it going to be? Like, seriously. Someone's, someone's fucking head had to roll after that fucking sports disaster. Someone's head had to roll. You hear Nick Bosa? Good too. Kyle Shanahan? You can't. You can't, you can't get rid of him because you got a young quarterback. It, okay. Kyle Shanahan has a two-year system, and yet Brock is ahead of the curve, but he, he, he could get better in the pocket. He could get stronger. He can get a stronger arm because he's still young. He's still, he's just, he doesn't, Brock Purdy doesn't even have an NFL body yet because he hasn't, he, he's, he's, he's coming as a rookie. You don't have a chance to get in the NFL weight room. Second year, destroyed his elbow, and he made it just in time for training camp, right? So this, this is what you can't, you can't get rid of Kyle because you just got your quarterback. I think, I think he's elite. Like I said, like everyone else, he's Jason Patrick Mahomes, who fucking knows everything. He knows it. He's hella smart. This guy's everywhere. He had teachers as parents. This kid is aware, Patrick. 28. You can't, you can't do it now, or you're starting over. You can't. So someone's head had to roll. There was always some kind of little dispute. I, I don't know if Bosa liked him when they came in. I don't, I don't think they dislike him, but something was wrong. Something was wrong. So, so it would have been nice if they won. He's not going to be fired. That game caused Steve Wilkes the job. Big time consequence. For Kyle not being fucking prepared. Kyle Shanahan. You hired the guy. You didn't let him run his own defense. You didn't trust him. They did pretty damn well. Was he Super Bowl ready? Initially, he was. But yeah, you know what? You should have set the damn stand. You can't have no fucking loafing. And guys not playing hard in the NFC Championship game. Whatever is wrong, you had to fix it. And the reason why you didn't have time for Steve Wilkes, who was willing to learn, who was willing to get out of the box, and go to what the guy was willing to fucking try because you you're so fucking invested in your own offense you need an offensive coordinator like i said last year and before and forever even if even if you're like you needed to to, to have the steve wilkes of offensive coordinators guys who are going to listen to do what you're going to do just to take some of the load off so you could help steve wilkes learn he was willing to do it and because you didn't have time so many other things suffer. Consequence. First of all, number one, you lost the fucking Super Bowl because all the little extra things you need to do as a head coach, you're not willing to give to somebody else on your offense. And the ripple effect. You had to... You, Steve Wilkes had to play veterans like Logan Ryan, Isaiah Oliver, who we did not want to see. You didn't get Jair Brown ready fast enough. And now we don't know if, if uh, Jalen Graham... Or D. Winters, or Luter Jr., or Womack, or any of these guys are damn ready. <sighs> you don't even trust your own damn self. We've been trying to find a backup tight end for years. We don't trust Travis Kelsey. I'm not Travis. Uh, we don't trust. Uh, what the hell? Our backup tight end. Get the damn roster here. I'm like Kyle Shanahan, forgetting the rules. My brain doesn't work properly. 
We don't trust Ross Murray. He's been on the team for years. He never catches the pass. Like we we can use Ross. Why don't we use? Why don't we use our bench? We've kicked so many times. I started Gary Lamb main event mania post game show where the Niners were kicking ass. They should have got Ross Murray some passes. I know he's hurt. Or Charlie Warner, our backup tight end, some passes. Or Cam Lott too. Something. Or Jordan Willis. Or uh, uh, Braden Willis. Is Braden Willis. Braden Willis might not be in our fullback. We don't have a fullback order next year, and no one else played fullback. But Kyle Yushek, not prepared for long term, not prepared for the big game, baby. We're playing scared, we're playing in between, and the Chiefs went all out. The Chiefs were not afraid to go one on one and make Brock Purdy throw over the top. Because we didn't we weren't long term ready. We didn't we didn't trust the guy, a speed guy, just to, just to make a guy uh, go over the top. Because you don't always have players, but sometimes you have to have guys in the system. Like a McCall Harbin, who just, I can beat you deep. I can beat you deep. And that leaves the middle open, so it makes you scared to, you know, freaking sticky coverage on the Niner receivers. Niners play scared. They don't take risks. And that's good to a degree. But it doesn't get you the Super Bowl. You gotta rip the Super Bowl out of bloody hands. We kind of gave it to him, man. Man, that, that fumble was terrible. The, the, uh, the punt fumble off of uh, Thrill Looter Jr., that was terrible. But, you know. We're not able to overcome. We hung in there. Okay. The biggest consequence of losing the Super Bowl, Brock Purdy's not a made man. We needed this for Brock Purdy's confidence. We needed this so the team wouldn't question him. Yeah, we believe in him, but there's question marks about Brock. If Brock wins the Super Bowl, I don't want to hear shit about Brock right now. I think he's elite, but elite don't mean shit. You just got to beat Patrick Mahomes and win the Super Bowl. Because Brock... Patrick Mahomes is on another. He's a juggernaut. It doesn't matter. Can he beat Patrick Mahomes? I think I think Brock has plenty of uh, athleticism. But you know what? The Chiefs did a great job playing matchup football and spying him and respecting his his athletic ability. That's why they won the game. But the consequence is this: again, all the pressure is going to be on Brock instead of having that. I got the Super Bowl like Tom Brady did. Tom Brady was a game manager for a while. But it, more wins, less pressure. No pressure on Patrick. He's, he, he's won already. All the pressure on the point. In the end, all the pressure was on the Chiefs, but uh, they on the 49ers. But early in the game, the Niners did the Niners did a great job of, of making. You know, the Niners were kicking their ass in the, in the in the damn beginning. They were whipping their ass. They had a good game plan, but they couldn't adapt because they don't have common sense with these matchups. There was no, there's no plays to say, I'm going to get one-on-one -on -one with Kittle. Let's do that in the Super Bowl. One-on-one with Ayuk, let's do that in the Super Bowl. Let's get Christian McCaffrey one-on-one -on, -one on the linebacker. None of that in the Super Bowl. Consequences, Brock Purdy, you're limited by the offense. Limited by the offense. Because most of that shit didn't work. Most of, the, most of the time, the guys are not open, so it looks bad when someone's wide open and you miss them. But usually, there's a guy in his face, and your mind is already thinking, I just can't throw the ball out there and throw a pick, because most of the time, my guy's been getting covered. You don't have that kind of chemistry because you don't have the reps, and the consequence is a lot of pressure on Brock Purdy. And we're going to have to see. He's got to take... The season, the season is riding on Brock next year. Because either we're not going to have Jawan Jennings, who is obviously huge in this game. Either we're not going to have Jawan Jennings or Brandon Ayuk or Debo. We can't. Can we keep them all? Or the same sucky ass line. You know, we're going to have to rely on Spencer Burford to step up. Because I don't think we're going to have John Feliciano next year. He's off the team for the shit he said about Burford. He's gone, and he was he was important. If he, if John Felicia, so many little things happen this game. Kittle goes out at a bad time. 
and a penalty by um, I think Braden Willis, right? Because he wasn't ready. Uh, and that's Kyle's fault. Debo goes out like in big situations. Just at, of course, Greenlaw goes out. So many, so many things at the wrong time. We have the Super Bowl, and not winning the Super Bowl. You know, a big missed assignment by Burford. That's the worst because it was a critical moment, right? You can never. Someone should have said, "Never let ninety-five. Never let Chris Jones alone. Never, ever, 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 ever." And it happened more than once in the damn game. Someone. Someone, no, that fucking, there should be a picture, right, of Chris Jones, wanted, never leave this motherfucker alone. That's what exactly said that shit. That's what the 49 has no fucking common sense. They want to be geniuses with all their, their stupid wide nine, and their fancy fucking uh, Kyle Shanahan offense. But they, they're not ready for two-minute drills in the clutch. They're not ready for fucking guard... Putting, putting a spy on Patrick Mahomes. They're not ready for never leaving fucking 95 unblocked under any damn circumstance. Should be ready for this shit. And meanwhile, the Chiefs were, the Chiefs are getting their asses whipped. And as soon, as soon as there was a, 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 a chick in the armor, as soon as Ray Grillo went down, like, hey, coach, 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 57 is down, 57 is down, 57 is down. They were ready. Because they have that license. Kyle, you have a great system. You are a great coach. But are you a champion, brother? And that's the question. That's the same question for Brock Purdy. The same question for Brandon Ayuk, which I do not want to see go. But who may have to go? I don't want him to go. It's not my choice. Hey! But guess what? The Golden State Warriors are kicking ass! I love the athleticism of the front line with Traymond Green, who's more important on offense than you think. Wiggins and Tamingo are playing together. I love it. I love Pajinski starting. And it just lets Clay Thompson be... A brain dead shooter. Let him fucking shoot. That's all it Let him shoot. All right. But it took time. And see, Kerr, like Kyle Shanahan, is not a perfect coach. But he knew how to deal with people. That's what Kyle Shanahan needs to do. Jerry Lamb, Made of Mania. God bless you. Keep it real. Keep it clean.